Hello, I'm Lizelle Sambury and welcome back to my channel where I chat about all things traditional publishing and writing, talking about my journey, etc, etc. And I really need to come up with a better intro, but I haven't. So anyway, welcome to this month's vlog. It is April. Um, and yeah, this is the start of the month. Uh, my hair is messy and too lazy to do anything real about it until the end of this week. And so I'm here with a hair accessory. And yeah, so this is how the month is going. This month, I have a few things that I need to get done slash I'm going to be working on. So um, I'm doing a workshop with the fold um, on this upcoming Saturday. And so I'm just kind of finalizing things for that. I like have my presentation done and I've run through it once. I just kind of want to run through it a couple more times just to make sure I'm feeling confident about how I'm going to present everything um, because it actually is like a good chunk of information and I'm trying to like get in as much as possible but also like leave room for questions and stuff like that so there's that um, and then writing wise I am going to work on be working on plotting my adult horror thriller that I'm calling the couples retreat um, it's about a couple whose relationship is kind of not working out they've been together for a long time and she kind of feels like it's time for a certain amount of things to be happening like we should be getting married and like having kids etc etc and it's not really happening and she she has kind of pushed them to try this retreat to see what can come of it. Um, and so that's like a very basic explanation. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, and uh, you know, it's a horror thriller. So like things clearly don't work out at this retreat the way they're supposed to. There's some very odd things happening. There's some strange things going on. Again, I haven't actually pl started plotting this yet. And so I don't have a lot to work with, <laughs> but I'm gonna be working on plotting it this month. So my goal is to be done that by the end of this month so that I can start drafting next month. Um, I do need to travel and do research on location for this because I'm setting it at a resort in Niagara-on-the-Lake, which I've never been to, but just because of like scheduling and my partner and him starting a new job and vacation days, blah, 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 I'm not sure when we're going to get to go. And so instead of holding off on drafting, I've decided that I'm going to like move forward with plotting and drafting and it'll just be like, I'll try and get out on location <laughs> before I have to self edit it. Um, and I'll just kind of leave little placeholders for descriptions and stuff. And then when I get out there and I'm able to go and do all my research, then I can come back and edit it in and like do all the description stuff properly. Um, so I'm just going to have to do it a lot like that. It's not ideal. I would have liked to go there beforehand, but it's just kind of the way it has to work out. You know, that's how life is. So my plan is to plot everything. So I've kind of laid out three weeks for me to work on that just because there's a long weekend happening and all that stuff. Um, and then I am supposed to be getting my line edits for Bear Hunt back next week is what my editor said. So I should be getting them back pretty quick. So that is my 2024 book, my YA horror thriller. And so um, I'll be working on those and that'll probably also take me two to three weeks to get done. So I'll be finishing up that. And then also I have a bunch of stuff going on towards the end of the month. So I'll be going to Y'all West in uh, Santa Monica, California. So I have that. And then the week after that, which is actually in May, I'm going to be doing like a I'm moderating a panel for The Fold, which is a festival of literary diversity. And so I have to, this month, <laughs> read all the books from the panelists and like come up with questions and stuff like that, since I'm going to be moderating that. And so getting ready for that. So <laughs> this is a month of like doing a bunch of like Fold stuff. Um, and then also like these two kind of writing project things. And I still have some anthology stuff kind of floating in the air. So I don't know if I'm going to end up having to do edits on any of those. So we will see two of them will be in copy edit stage. So that's not too bad, but one, I haven't done any edits at all. On, so I'm kind of afraid of that dev edit just like popping out of nowhere, but we will see. But I think it's supposed to be a fairly good, like sort of chill month. And then I've also sewing wise decided to kind of try and make a full suit, um, 
collared shirt and tie for my partner um, because I wanted to try making a full suit and I already know how to make a collared shirt and I want to try making a tie <laughs> so that's my kind of like sewing goal for the month um, but yeah otherwise you know things have gone good practicing is going well and I'm really excited to get to dive into the couples retreat because I've been like talking about how I was gonna work on it and then I filled out that whole grant application and so I'm like now I'm you know I did some research in the months prior and now I'm like finally gonna get to like dig into like doing the plotting so yeah that's really all that's gonna be going on this month and I will check back in with you on Friday is Tuesday um, and I'm decided I'm gonna stop saying specific days that I'm gonna update because apparently I don't stick to it so here I am on Tuesday and I will catch you up with everything that happened last week and then kind of what I'm gonna be working on going forward so last week I got past pages for my space potato farm story which was way faster than I was expecting to get that so I did that and now I am done with that short story I was able to cross it off my list of things that I have to get done this year so that was very exciting and I'm very happy about that <laughs> um, I also did my workshop on Saturday so I did that workshop with the fold um, about layered plotting and that went well there were a little bit of technical difficulties with my sound in the beginning but we got it sorted out um, and I hope that people got a lot out of that workshop. Um, it was a lot of things I had to cover in a short amount of time, so I did kind of have to go in a speedy way, but I sent over a lot of um, supportive material with examples and stuff, and so I hope that all came together to help. Um, I don't know if Fold is going to post it or do any sort of replay or anything like that, but if they do in the future, I will let you know. Um, and I don't know if that's something I'm gonna like redo <laughs> on the channel mostly just because I'm tired because I already presented it once um, but we'll see maybe in the future I'll talk more about that plotting style and how I do that um, but yeah so I was able to get that done and otherwise I kind of just relaxed for the long weekend I started playing this game wildflowers on my iPad I'm absolutely obsessed with it it's the best usually I avoid farming sims because I find them to be kind of like boring but this one had like a lot of different stuff that you could do and I really love the art style and the animation and like the story because there's also like magic involved anyway I had a ton of fun doing that <laughs> and so that's kind of how I spent the weekend I also started um with sewing a suit I also ordered some fabric because I'm supposed to make an apron for my mom um and uh, I also wanted to make this like jumpsuit for myself and I kept looking for fabric and not finding anything that I wanted and I finally found a pattern that I really like so I ordered that for myself that I will make at some point um, perhaps taking breaks from the suit because it's a lot of stuff to do um, but yeah that was pretty much what I did we also worked we're renovation renovating our basement and we did some painting so we're almost done with like getting all the drywall and the paint up for the storage room which will like clear up a lot of space in the other rooms so that we can like get working on those so yeah it was a very nice productive but restful weekend um, and so during that time, I also started working on plotting the couples retreat, which I am continuing to do this week, um, which is that adult horror thriller that I'm working on. And so that's been going well. I've been doing new stuff, which is interesting. So yeah, I've already done so many new things in plotting this. So I very much feel like I'm, yeah, I'm innovating doing new stuff um so one of those is like I decided to structure the book based on an itinerary so it's a two-week retreat and so I've decided to base it on that itinerary which is kind of similar if you remember my very first shot at doing this adult horror thriller I had done one called six days and five nights and they were going to a resort for six days and five nights and I was arranging it by day in that one too so I'm kind of like 
I'm very much layering upon things that I've done in the past, but doing them in a different way, um, which to me feels like progress. And I'm really excited about that. So doing some new kind of structural things with this. So I use the Save the Cat story structure and there's like a B-plot character, which is a character that's supposed to help your main character on their journey to the story and like help them in understanding the theme or like what they really want. And this is my first time doing two B-plot characters. So the second POV character, um, she and the main character are going to have that sort of relationship, but also the partner of the main character because this is a couple's retreat. So they came there to repair their relationship relationship and so I'm also going to be using him as a B character. So this is my first time doing two B plot characters which is interesting. So yeah I'm excited to see how that goes. So I've started doing that as well and then today I'm just working on getting some subplots in place. So today I'm working on the one POV subplots and then tomorrow I'm going to work on the next POV subplots but I don't know we'll see how much time I have today because I feel like I'm making good time so I might be able to do both of them question mark we'll see how that goes um but yeah doing some new structural things which i think is fun and i think i might instead of doing chapters i might just do the days and the pov character name which i think could be fun but it could also be annoying when i'm trying to figure out which chapter i'm on so i don't know maybe i won't do that <laughs> we'll see what i feel like when i actually get to it I just don't want it to be so confusing when I have to reference different chapters, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I'll figure something out. Um, so that's that. And I'm also supposed to be getting my line edits for Bear Hunt soon, um, possibly today. Uh, so we will see. I really would like to get the line edits done before I start traveling and before I go to Santa Monica and all of that, just because I know that's going to be busy and I don't want it to have to have work to do while I'm going there but it kind of depends if it has to happen it has to happen so we'll see if I'm able to get that done because I could go through line edits fairly like you know with not like speed run but I think I could go through with confidence because in that last developmental edit I did I did a lot more detail work than I was expecting to do um so I really like combed through all of those paragraphs and stuff and so I don't know that I'll also have to do that for line edits and so I can kind of just like focus on whatever my editor has pointed out and then maybe for copy edits I can do another like super in-depth reading of it because I'll be back home by then so maybe that's what I'll do I don't know we will see uh but yeah otherwise that's kind of what I'm up to Hello, it is Friday and spring has finally sprung. I was going to turn my camera towards the light source, but it's honestly so bright. I really can't do it. So you're just going to see it on the side of my face and I'm sure that'll be okay with you. But yeah, it was a little bit too bright for me to face it directly. But I'm really happy because there was a period where like we were getting like snowdrop after snowdrop after snowdrop and I was starting to be like are we not going to get warm weather until May and I was starting to get really sad because everybody else was getting spring weather <laughs> and we were getting dumps of snow and then like in like three days it just like the temperature shot up and all of the snow has been melting like we had snow like we had a trailer in our front yard and all the snow is like gone from it in our backyard like Bobo was climbing all over these like snow piles and now they're like way down so I'm very happy about that because it's nice to have warmer weather so that's been great um but yeah what have I been doing writing wise so I made a decision <laughs> So essentially on Tuesday, I went to do my first day of working on both projects. Um, so I had line edits for Bear Hunt and I had um, 
plotting for the couple's retreat. So I had to plot 10 chapters for the couple's retreat and I had to line edit four chapters. And I wanted to do a very, very thorough line edit, like really reading in detail so I can get this as perfect as possible and like really get everything in so that when it goes to copy edits, you know, it's a little bit more lax. So <laughs> that was my plan. Um, and uh, I don't know, it was just like, I think it was just like that Thing with like a Tuesday after a long weekend where suddenly like everyone has a bunch of stuff to email everyone about and like I was emailing people too so like I wasn't any better and then I also had to make all of these calls and I just like got really quickly overwhelmed because it was like two o'clock or something and I was only just finishing my line edits and I was like oh now I have to plot 10 chapters of something do you want mama to put your thing back here mama can put it back there yeah Okay. There you go. Ugh. And it was just immediately overwhelming and I was like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> and so I just looked through my schedule and I realized that I could still do all the work that I wanted to do for the couples retreat in the time period that I wanted if I pushed it to May. If I pushed like a week of plotting to May and then immediately started drafting, I would still get everything that I needed to get done done. And so I decided to do that for my own well-being. And then of course Wednesday came and I like finished my line edits by like 10.30 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> but I decided to keep it that way because I was like, Lizelle, wasn't this your solemn vow to yourself that from 22 to 2023, you were going to give yourself more time and freedom and work on less things all at once? Like the point was to space things out so that you wouldn't feel overwhelmed. And I was like, it was. So I had that conversation with myself and I decided to keep things as it is. Um, because at the very least, what the, at the very most, I guess, what this might mean is that I might finish editing the couple's retreat like two weeks later than I wanted to. And I feel like that is very worth protecting my peace. And so I decided that's what I'm going to do. And so I've just been working on line edits for Bear Hunt. Um, and so far they are going well, going smoothly. I'm getting to take the time that I want to take going through each of the chapters and lines and that sort of thing. I was like, this is my time to like put in a bunch of like bangers for lines, but it's actually been like pretty good. Like I've been very happy with the pros and I've been like, actually I don't need that. I know that I necessarily need to do all of this like inserting. <laughs> Um, I think I'm actually very happy with what I kind of already have in place here um, and so it's really just kind of like little tweaks and that sort of thing. Mind you I'm sure there will be many more comments to work through the farther we get into the manuscript because the uh, as is with the case of all of my other manuscripts like the further you get into the manuscript the more things are revealed and the more world building is required and the more <laughs> that like twists and turns require explanations and then you get more comments and so I expect that to come down the line um but yeah for now we're doing pretty good and I'm happy with the pace of it and all of that so that's been good um I have been struggling with sewing this jacket I've thought about giving up a few times <laughs> I've been avoiding sewing for the difficulty of working on this jacket <laughs> But I'm continuing on with it because I want to at least try and do this one time. Um, I think it's just these pockets, these front pockets are killing me. But I have pretty much finished them at this point. I've also decided that I might potentially show, sew them shut if they're too ugly being open and functional. <laughs> and I'll just like tell my partner just be like you can't use the pockets on the jacket I'm sorry they make it look ugly I'm gonna figure it out but um yeah working on that but otherwise that's everything that's kind of going on there is some interesting behind the scenes stuff happening um this is something <laughs> like when could I say that I might tell you about it it's really the same sort of thing you know what I feel like this is, I can be vague enough with this that this actually works. So I do have some foreign deals in the works. Yes, I feel like that is something I can say without consequence. I do have some foreign deals in the works and so those are in process um, and I imagine I'll get to announce those in like six months or something like that. 
but perhaps not. But that is the exciting things that are happening in the background um, right now and hence why I had a bunch of emails. Um, so that's been really exciting. Um, and otherwise not like a ton of other book stuff going on. I feel like I'm in a pretty chill period right now and then I'm sure things will ramp up towards the end of the month when I'm traveling. Uh, hi. Hello, we are in the middle of the week, <laughs> but it feels like a good update point because tomorrow I'm going to be traveling to Yal West. So then after this whole clip, you'll see all the Yal West footage and then a little closing out of the vlog. So I figured this was a good time to, you know, close out the writing <laughs> section of the vlog because I'm not going to be doing any writing when I am traveling. Um, very much by design. Very, very much by design because I realized that writing while traveling is not awesome for me <laughs> and so I have made it so that I will not be doing that while I'm, uh, you know, traveling around. So that is that. But what has happened since I last updated you? So I have finished my line edits for my fourth book. Um, so, and I have like other book four updates as well, but <laughs> the most important is I finished my line edits. Um, yeah, I mean, it was when I got to the world building bits, it was quite a bit harder. <laughs> <laughs> um, those like logistical kind of world building bit things of like, you know, like when you have a thriller or a mystery and you have your big reveal, you need to explain your big reveal. And so <laughs> it was all those kind of logistic world building bits around that that I really needed to hone down and fix because I think over several drafts we've been tweaking it. And so I think, you know, between drafts, I kind of like <laughs> I lost the plot a little bit on like what I was doing and so that just needed to be fixed because there were inconsistencies and there were inconsistencies because we kept changing things from draft to draft um so I'm pretty sure that I've got that all sorted out in this draft this time around <laughs> I'd also had this funny thing where I had really overused the F word, um, which I wasn't really doing on purpose. It was just like, it just happened that it was kind of like overusing. And as I was reading through, I was like tweaking things because I was like, I feel like I'm using this word too much. And towards the end of the draft, my editor was like, no problem with swears, but maybe this one we're using a little bit too much. And I was like, I agree. So I went through the manuscript. I think I originally had like 130 <laughs> F words in there and I whittled it down to like 50, something like that. <laughs> so like a good chunk, I was like, you need to go. So that was funny because usually I don't do that in my books. I don't over, I not like so overly. Um, but yeah, this one for some reason overly. <laughs> But anyway, I fixed that up um, and I'm ultimately like very, very happy with what has come together from the book. There was a period like some point during the last week, which was like my second week of working on it, where I was like, is this whole thing trash? <laughs> is this entire book terrible? Should I throw this whole thing out? And I feel like that's just like a part of the process is sometimes you get to a point where you're like, maybe this whole thing is bad. And I always get to a point with my books where I think that and usually it's during line edits because I so don't like doing line edits because it's so nitpicky. But I just, yeah, that was a time where I was like, oh, is this all maybe just, you know, throw this all in the trash and start over somehow but I made it through I made it through <laughs> and once I got into the end I was like no I'm like very happy with this and we had I had originally had one epilogue and then I had replaced it with a different epilogue in that like that epilogue just became a chapter and then I added 
a new one and I'm very happy with that as well and I think I had talked in a previous vlog about how it, because that had happened it felt like I had two epilogues now and it was weird but it has been adjusted really well and now I think it fits really good I'm very very happy with the way the story ends and how that all comes together and so I'm really you know pleased about all of that and so I think it's come together to be a very good book and so I'm very happy with it um and yeah I'm happy with the line edits but I think the thing is I was like oh when I go to copy edits I can just do whatever but I'm a little bit I, I because I had done all those tweaks to streamline and to fix all my logistical things I'm kind of like I'm gonna have to keep a really like close eye on that when I do copy edits but that's the great thing about copy edits is that it's the copy editor's thing to be like this logistically doesn't make sense um and so <laughs> I it is my hope that when the copy editor looks through it they're gonna be like yeah okay this makes sense and this is how that makes sense together and so we'll get that kind of like second look at that logistical part of it so I'm actually for the first time looking forward to copy edits so that's that and also we finalized the cover after some after much back and forth we finalized the cover and I'm very very excited <laughs> for whenever we'll get to share it but I think it's really really good I absolutely love it um I just think it's like it's come together so well and I think it's gonna look really good next to the delicious monsters cover and just like you know and all of my covers as a whole, it's really, really good. I'm really pleased about it. And I've already started thinking about like what I could sew to like match it for my um, launch. Um, so I've already started thinking about that. I already have like an outfit in mind too, like a pattern in mind of what I want to sew. It's just kind of like, how will I get fabric that matches this the way I want to match it? But I'm very, very excited about it. So there's that. And that's pretty much all the book for updates. Um, and yeah, so that's cool. Um, also, my friend, my dear friend, Lindsay Puckett is gone off to the UK to visit and she went into a water snows and she saw delicious monsters in store, um, which is wild because my publisher had talked about like that they were going to have like the US version of Delicious Monsters and they were going to sell that in the UK. But I assumed it was the same thing for like Blood Like Magic that like, you know, people could order online, but it wouldn't be in store. Like they would just order it online and they could order the US version if they want. But she saw it in store on a table. So that was very, very exciting. <laughs> Um, and really cool because I didn't think it would be in store at all without selling UK rights like separately so that was very cool so yeah um, I guess if you're in the UK you may be able to find it in a bookstore like physically so that's very very cool <laughs> and um, that's kind of all of that delicious monster stuff and then separately the other thing that happened this week is that we finalized the proposal for the horror trio so I went through the whole thing and I did a bunch of edits way more edits than I thought I was gonna do but there were a lot of things that I wanted to tweak so I did a ton of tweaking and then I sent it to my agent and then on the weekend I was like I don't know how I feel about these pages I felt like there was something missing from them, but I had already sent it. And I was like, oh, maybe it's not, maybe I'm being too whatever. And then on the weekend I was like, no, something is missing from these pages. It's just something's missing. <laughs> and so I emailed my agent and I was like, I hope you haven't read it yet. I take it back. I'm gonna fix something in the pages and then I'll send it to you again. And then I went back through the pages and I added in a bunch of like lines and like little tonal bits and like little creepy bits that to me pulled out the horror tone of the pages much better than it had been when I had put it all together. Because I really felt like it was kind of lacking something and I think what it was lacking was that sort of horror tones and these sorts of like lines that I like to put in that I think you know really bring that out and really kind of feel like my writing and like how I do horror and like give it the tone and that feeling of being set apart that I wanted and so I went in and I added those to the pages and then suddenly I was like perfect very happy very proud of this 
really happy to send this off. And so I sent it back to my agent. She was happy with all of the changes. Um, and so we just finalized that. And she's going to be sending that off to my publisher tomorrow. Um, so I'm glad I will have the distraction of traveling and all of that to, yeah, stop me from thinking about it too much. But I think it'll probably be a little while before we hear back from them because they have like a month to read it. Like contractually, they have a month to like make their decision. So I assume that they're not going to like make their decision right away. They're going to take that time. So after this point, you will probably not hear me talk about the Horochio for a very long time. There are basically kind of multiple ways this could go. So you don't hear me talk about it for a very long time because they have purchased it and we've gone ahead. And at some point you will hear about it when that deal is announced or you don't hear me talk about it for a long time and the publisher doesn't want it or negotiation or whatever falls through and we go on wide submission, at which point maybe I'll say, hey, we're going on wide submission or maybe I'll be too crushed and I won't want to say anything. <laughs> and so you won't hear anything about it and maybe down the line it will get purchased by someone else and then you'll see when that announcement comes or potentially um, my publisher will not want it, no one will want it, and it will die on submission, and you won't hear me talk about it until I'm like, hey, so for reasons, I'm going to write a new YA project. <laughs> In which case, yeah, that'll be the case. So yeah, no more discussion of the horror trio for a while, but I'm very excited to have completed that proposal and I'm excited to see what comes of it. So that's it for this update and I will see you again when I'm at Yol West. Hello again. I know you might be thinking back so soon because we just, <laughs> you would have just come directly from my last update. But the way I'm going to do this is that I'm going to talk about all the Y'all West stuff. And then as I'm talking about it, I will intersperse some footage that I took from it instead of doing a big giant thing of B-roll and then me talking <laughs> for a long time, I figured this might be a little bit more of a dynamic way to do it. So um, yeah, I went to Y'all West in Santa Monica. Right now I'm in Toronto because I have another conference and so on and so forth to go through. But um, yeah, Y'all West in Santa Monica. And so I flew over on Thursday night and then Friday was really my first full day there. And so what I did is I kind of just like had breakfast at the hotel and then I decided to go to the Santa Monica Pier just because it was nearby and it was something to do. <laughs> and I was just like, what can I do while I'm here? Because I didn't really have anything like event wise official to do on Friday. So it was kind of like a free day. So I went ahead and I just went to the pier and looked around. It was really cool. It was just like a fun, nice place. And I could see the beach, um, which I've learned now that like Santa Monica is like a beach town. And I was like, okay, I understand that because there was a giant beach and it was just like fun to go walk around and look at stuff. I didn't go on rides or anything, but I just kind of wanted to, you know, walk around and see something. Whenever I go to new places, I'm like, I just want to look at stuff. <laughs> I want to see some different things. So I went and I did that. And then I went into downtown Santa Monica for a little bit too just to kind of like walk around and see stuff really I was trying to decide where I wanted to eat lunch and naturally ended up walking around to a bunch of different places because I was indecisive <laughs> Um, but yeah, I just kind of walked around and enjoyed that. Eventually I decided to have lunch at this Italian place, which was really nice. Um, and it was just like a fun time. I had a point in time where I was like sitting with my little pasta and like chilling in Santa Monica. And I was like, wow, this is like actually my life. I was like, this is all of the dream author stuff that I wanted to do. And I was like, these are the things to remember whenever I have like, <laughs> whenever I have like a low self-esteem or a low moment about my writing career, I can remember all of these things that, you know, not even that long ago were dreams to me and like things that I didn't actually think I would get to do, but really, really hoped I would be able to do. And so that was just amazing. That was my little reflective moment as I ate my pasta and watched YouTube on my phone. That's one of the things I know, I think so. I'm the sort of person where I do enjoy my own company. 
And so I'm very happy to go and like have lunch or dinner by myself and I just like watch my little videos and I'm like very introverted about it. So I had a fun time. Um, but then, so they had this Friday preview event at Y'all West and I didn't really know what it was going to be so i just kind of went to the public library and showed up and i think it, it was really kind of like a bunch of signings and stuff set up but it was also like a ton of authors just like milling around <laughs> and chatting and stuff and so i went and joined them there and i just like got to talk to a bunch of different authors that were there um some were like you know official y'all west authors and like some more authors that were like had come just to enjoy it the same way that like i went to um y'all fest last year just to like go as a guest and like have a fun time and like talk to people and so that was great and so i did that for a while i got to meet a ton of authors that i had only met online and like some that i had met previously and then i got to see again and so that was really cool that's been something really fun too about getting to travel around more and like getting to go to these is that there are some authors that i'm starting to see regularly at these events and then it's kind of nice because i feel like um you know we're building up a non-online relationship on top of that and so it's just kind of fun in that way and so after that, um, went back to the hotel and then kind of chilled for a little bit and then went to the author kickoff party, um, which was also great. More meeting of authors. Um, they did have food and stuff, but because I had gone and like chowed down on my pasta earlier, I wasn't hungry. So I just kind of milled about. Um, I also knocked over a drink and like that was that but I recovered from the embarrassment of the moment very quickly I feel like so that was good and yeah it was really I was very proud of myself for entering social situations because these are the sorts of things and I had a full meeting with my therapist about this about like really wanting to enter these social situations and wanting to socialize and talk with different authors and do all of that but like feeling very like anxious about entering those situations in which I don't know people well um, and like introducing myself and stuff like that. And so one of our strategies was to come up with a goal of like, I'm gonna introduce myself to three people and no matter how that interaction goes, you know, if I feel like I was too awkward or this or that, or <laughs> that I did the thing of like, I went and I introduced myself. And so that's like the success to focus on. Um, and that happened very, very naturally. I really even didn't even have to super <laughs> think too hard about it. And so I do feel like I'm becoming a lot more comfortable in those sorts of situations, which was really great. So that was Friday. I also got creme brulee at the hotel, which was very, very good. Um, do you care about that? Maybe not, but I don't have a lot of opportunities to eat creme brulee and it was really good. Um, and then it was Saturday. So Saturday is the big official y'all west day so firstly what i went is i went to have breakfast with two familiar faces or hopefully familiar faces i met up with becca c smith and cache warren they're both authors and they both have youtube channels so i'm gonna link them down below that is how i met them and becca i've been able to meet a few times but this is my first time getting to meet cache in person which was awesome i was so so excited to get to see her and hang out and so we went to this place called dogtown coffee it was really really good i ended up going again on sunday because i loved it so much it was just like a really cool chill place and they had like amazing like drinks and food and um california like when i now like whenever i go to california i'm like this is the place for a top-notch acai bowl and so that's what i got <laughs> and we just like got to hang out and chit chat and all of that and then we went over to y'all west together um like the i don't know like the fairgrounds the festival grounds um and we walked around and like looked at stuff and mostly just like talked and stuff and then they came to my first panel as well so we got to hang out and so i was very very excited about that um and then i had to do my author things <laughs> So um, I went to the Simon Teen booth um, to do some publicity things with them. So, you know, things that they're going to use on their own social channels. And so they had this like really cool booth set up. And so I did some stuff in there with them. I also told a really bad joke. I'm sure that video is going to come out at some point. Um, and so I had done that. I also got to meet my US publicist in person for the first time, which was lovely. And I got to see some of the other different people from um, 
Simon and Schuster who I had met in like other conference things and so that was great too um and yeah so I did that and then it was off to my panels so I had two panels in a row one was family drama which was as the name suggests talking about like family themes in books and that sort of thing and then another one was the mystery of mysteries which was you know kind of like the mystery thriller panel um and I went and did that and those were really good I was kind of nervous going into it because really panels I'm quite comfortable with but you know there's always a little bit of like oh I haven't done like an in-person panel <laughs> in a little bit um, but it was very comfortable and it was like super laid back and chill it really did feel very like conversational whatever sort of thing and so that was great so I did those two panels and then I had my signing so then I went to the signing area and it was really good I think I've, because uh, Beck and Cashier were like, oh, are you like nervous for your, for your panels and your signings and things like that? And I was like, the panel a little bit, but mostly I'm okay because I'm kind of used to doing the panels. And the signing, I was like, I've really kind of gotten to the point where I've had enough like very good successful signings that I don't necessarily feel like I'd be crushed if I went and sat down for a signing and like, you know, only a couple people came, I feel like I would still be fine. <laughs> and so, yeah, I was very like chill going into the signing and it was really, really nice. Like I got to have some really fantastic conversations with readers. It really like, <laughs> it's very cheesy. It really like filled my heart though. Like it was really amazing for people to come up and tell me how much their books meant to me, how much yeah how much my books meant to them there we go um and how much they enjoyed it and how much they were looking forward to more books i also like funnily enough had a lot of people that like came up with their copies of delicious monsters and they were like i haven't read it yet i was so sorry and i was like it's really okay like it didn't come out that long ago it's really okay if you haven't read it yet um it was very sweet but lots and lots of just fantastic people that i got to meet and so that was really positive with the signing that's something i really like about doing signings is like getting to meet readers and like if they're coming to have you have me sign the book they're people that are fans and are interested in the book and so um that was really great so yeah that was and that was kind of what i had to do for the day and so i was done there and i just felt really tired so i did end up like going back to the hotel to just like downtime for a bit and then we had our wrap-up party um we had some tacos which was great i tried horchata for the first time and i was like oh this is very good I, you know i'd heard about it but i never just like come into occasion of actually trying it so that was really great um and yeah it was just like a cool wrap party i didn't stay for like a super long time but you know i got to see people and say hi and hang out and then uh yeah went back to the hotel and uh, just got ready for the next day. Also in between there, I forgot to say, I did order a cronut because I was like, this is a city, they must have cronuts, <laughs> which I probably could have just gotten a cronut in Toronto, but I was like, I want to try and get one here. So I got a cronut, it was very, very delicious. I also influenced others to get cronuts. So <laughs> it was a good time. And yeah, and then Sunday I had a later flight and so I had more time to do stuff. Um, so me and Sarah Raleigh, who is the author of The Bones of Ruin and The Song of Wrath um, and a third book and <laughs> The Effigies Trilogy, author of many books, um, but she's uh, lives she lives in the Toronto area. Um, and so we were <laughs> Canadian buddies. <laughs> and so we went to the Getty together just because I was looking up stuff to do and it's like a free museum and it was close enough to the hotel and so we went and did that and we got a tour around the garden area and just kind of looked at some of the art and stuff and that was really fun i again i just want to look at stuff like that's enough for me i just want to walk around and look at different things and the garden area was really really beautiful and impressive and so we just walked around there and hung out and then uh took the plane back and now i'm in toronto so that was the whole y'all west experience it was really really 
fun and awesome and I'm really grateful that I got to go, grateful that my publisher paid to send me um, and that I got to just like interact with a bunch of readers and like be part of the whole experience. It was really really great um, and you know that was one of my uh, author bucket list things was oh I'd love to be like an author guest at Y'all West or Y'all Fest. Um, so that was really wonderful. And yeah, I just had a very good time. It's just a fun time to get to go to those things. And I always, you know, cross my fingers and I'm like, I hope I get to go to more, but I always know that I can look back and like it, I've gotten to go at all. And that really means a lot to me because not everyone gets to um, go to those sorts of events. And so I really appreciated getting to go and hang out and have a fun time. And that was kind of like my last US event on the roster. Like I don't have any US events lined up or planned for the future. Um, I do have uh, unannounced Canadian stuff planned for the future, but nothing more in the US. But we will see if anything else pops up over time it is still kind of the beginning of the year so there's a lot of space for things to pop up but yeah that's basically it for the vlog um and it for everything else so yeah i will stop babbling now and i will move on from <laughs> Is. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And thank you so much for watching. Bye.